minus 2. Remember, every time you see this, please don't forget that you have to think of this as two separate binomials. Even when it comes to factoring other things, make sure that you have that.
answer. Would two be the answer? So they'd be what? They'd be, so what's the solution? Then what do you say? Not zero. No solution. Thank you for the help. No solution or empty set. Okay? You can do an empty set like that. You can do an empty set like that. You can write no solution. But again, that's a head of the mess now. Next. Next. What if it had only been greater than? Still an open circle, so that's not going to change. Say again? Except for which spot? You're right so far. There's one exception to it, though. Isn't there a big open circle in the middle there? So it can't be this number two anymore? But what, what you're saying is right all our numbers, because what's greater than zero, right? All the positive numbers? And these all come out to be positive. So you're right, we would shade all this, and we would shade all of this. But since there's an open circle in the middle, we would say all real numbers except two. Okay, so your solution set for this one might say something like that. X E R, X instead of all real numbers, except X cannot be two, because of the open circle there. What if it had been instead of greater than, greater than or equal to? How would that change? It would be all real numbers because I'm just simply close that circle, which indicates to me it is all real numbers. Everything is shaded because these are both positives, and we want this to be greater than or equal to zero now. Okay, so it would be all real numbers. So, a problem like this can test you in four different ways very easily. So expect to see on your, uh, on your exam, on your test on Wednesday, um, you're going to see a multiple choice problem that might be greater than. You might see another problem that might be less than, another one that's less than or equal to. So expect to see the different types of inequality signs. Okay? Just keep that in mind. So the, the, the sign itself makes no difference, except it indicates most where we shade. Solving the problem is the same no matter what I really do. Identify the critical points, test the regions, and then go to your inequality sign. But you don't even touch on the inequality sign until the very end of the problem and it tells you where to shape. Okay? Yeah. Um, when you test the points, um, does it have to be in the equation of the zero? No, you can always go back to the original and see if that location is true or false. Did you look at the notes online and yeah. look it up? If you do it that way, that's absolutely fine. Okay. I'm just trying to show different ways of doing it. So you can always go back to the original. It doesn't have a zero on the right hand side. And if the statement you result in is true, you shade that area. That's fine. Okay? If you'd like to, guys, if this is confusing at all with the greater than or less than zero, you can take a look at the notes that I put and I saw it a different way. So you can see more than my interpretation. Let's take a look at number four now. I happen to have a zero, so this is an easier problem again. The next one will not have a zero on the right hand side. Who can tell me how to start this? And remember, I need to get the roots of the equation. The roots of the equation. I'll have it. Good. GCF, please, right away. There's a W in both. And why does this help me so much? What does this now do to the problem? What do I have an example of here? What do I see as an example right here? Yes, perfect squares. Good job. So we see difference of two squares. Katarina, what do I get when I do this? Uh, w plus 4 w. Good. Remember, take the square root of each statement, okay? And just, just for a little side note, you don't have to write this, but please think about it. If this had said the following, this would just become a three and a three. Are we all clear on that? So you could have a number in front of here also, and then a variable, and the square root of nine is just three. So you'd have to put the three in front of the w. Okay, if this had been a 16y squared, you would have a y at the end of both these spots now. Obviously not for this problem, but keep that in mind for factoring. A lot of students forget that. You can have variables and numbers in both spots. All right, back to our problem. All right, our roots. What are the roots of the critical points going to be in this problem? John, for the first part, right here, here, and here, what am I going to get from this? I want to find the roots of the equation. What do I have to set them each equal to? Um, I Good. I said equal to zero. This one? Yeah. And then what about over here? Do I do anything? Yeah, very good. So my critical points are negative four, four, and zero. I'm going to have three critical points here. Now, unfortunately, when you have zero as a critical point, it makes the testing not harder, but you have to, you can no longer test zero in the equation. I'm going to put our number line down here. Negative four, 
zero and a four. Now, how many regions do I have, or how many critical points do I have? Three. So how many tests do I have to run? Four. No matter how many critical points, that many n plus one is the number of tests we'll perform. Okay? Unless it's a double word or something, then it's different. So let's test points. We have to test a bunch. To the left of negative four, what would you test, everybody? Thank you, man. Not everybody. Come on, guys. The smaller number is the next one to choose. So whenever you have a number on here, choose the next smaller. Over here, you're going to choose the next bigger. Between zero and four, I'd probably choose one. Between zero and negative four, I'd choose negative one. Try and test one, zero, or negative one always. If you need to test something else because it's not in that region, test the next biggest number after the end point. So the critical point is four, test five. The critical point is negative four, test negative five. Okay? In the original, if I test negative 5, this becomes negative 125. And this is going to be plus 5 times 16 is 80. This is still going to give me a negative quantity. So I'm just going to put a negative sign here. And that's all that matters, really. It does not matter what the actual number is. What matters is that there's a negative symbol in it. Yes. minus a negative 16, so plus 16. That's going to be a positive answer, because 16 is bigger than the 1 there. So when I test this region, I'm going to get a positive result. So I'd like to write down positive. Next, I want to test positive 1. Mike, what do I do when I test the positive 1 up here? What do I get when I test the positive 1? Negative answer. <laughs> Mike, it's funny because sometimes I'm like, Mike, what am I getting at? Me? You get on your mic though. This is funny when you say that. Alright, so 1 cube is 1, minus 16 is negative 15, so yes, we get a negative. And then finally, let's test positive 5. 5 cubed. What do I get for 5 cubed? 125. And this is going to be minus 16 times 5, which is 80. That's a positive result, clearly, right? I don't care what the number is, though. That's the whole cool part about this. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that it's a positive. Now, this is when we finally go back to our inequality sign. So at this point in time, we haven't even looked at that greater than or equal to sign. We did not even identify it. So, let me start by putting my critical points here. I color them in simply because it's greater than or equal to. Ready? Want to help us out? Oh, thank you, yes. For the solution now, we want to know when this expression right here is greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero means what kind of numbers? Positive. So look for your positive regions and just shade. Shade in that region right there. Shade in that region right there with an arrow at the end of it because it goes off. So this problem we have, it looks like some little segment right here from negative 4 to 0, and then away from 4 to positive infinity. So that's the solution set. Now these are the kind of problems that your number line helps you write your solution set for. I wouldn't write the solution set just using a testing interval. I would put it on the number line first and then write the solution set. It makes it a lot easier. Mix those up a lot, yeah. Zero, good. Or, very good. Again, it was between negative four and zero. That's this first statement right here. And you can see this. You're simply breaking up the answer. Between negative four and zero is an and statement, shade in between, and then everything bigger than four comes up right here in this statement. And it can be one region or the other. So that's why we put this four statement smack to them. Okay? It's the same process over and over again. It's the same thing we did with absolute values. Okay? So the statements are no different. It's just that now we're approaching the problems in a bit of a different manner. Okay? Last one. Last one. 
I'm going to give you a minute to see how you're going to start this. Try it on your own. See what you would do. And if you need to go back and look at this, the steps that we said to do on this, please go back and look at your notes. Minus three, h minus three. Very good. I didn't know you were saying it again. Very much. Oh, that's right. Good. H squared, h minus three, h minus three, which is in a sense what? Only two solutions, right? Why is only two solutions? P. Good. Good. They're both the same things, right? We would normally set every factor equal to zero, God bless you. So you would say h squared equals zero, God bless you. You would say h squared equals zero, which just gives you h equals zero. That's one of your critical points. Over here, h minus three equals zero, it's the same, so h equals three. So these are our critical points of this problem. Zero and three. And they're both double roots, right? They're both double roots. Why are they double roots again? What does that mean, the double roots? Yeah, it's the same answer twice. So the 0 appears twice from both of these H's, which is really like that. And the 3 appears twice from these two. Those are my critical points. Let's draw a number line. All right. Now, at this point in time, I want to do some testing. The leftmost region, man. The leftmost region. What point would you choose? The leftmost region, what would you test? What point? I'm asking you another one. Negative one, good. Okay. When I test negative one, I go back to my line that has the zero, which is right here. This line. I see I have negative one to the fourth, that's just one. And feel free, by the way, to take, see how I told you about this? See this equation right here? You can do this. Feel free to go like 
this. Y equals of a response, but you could have said this. H is less than zero, or zero less than H, less than three, or H is greater than three. Everybody see how it would that? Think about it as three parts. Everything less than zero, between zero and three, bigger than three. Okay? So again, what's the process? summarize this course and make it easy? Begin and end. What's your struggle? And how do you go through the process? And how do you end? Find the critical points. Find the critical points. That's the regions. And then shade accordingly. So again, same process in practicing the whole way through until you get to your critical points, which we call critical points now, not roots, even though the same thing. We then test our regions to see which of our regions holds true. Okay? And then fin at the end, write your solution. Again, please, the solution set at the end here, please write it after you shade your number line. It makes it easier, it really does. Okay? For this section, for homework, if you want to practice tonight, and a lot of you obviously, I'm assuming, uh, over the week after the drama set, or you did a lot of this, so we just had the problems. You want to use these ones to practice. OP means oral exercises. It's like one that the teacher would speak, but they're actually pretty good exercises. It's matching. It's matching like inequalities with shading. I just want you to practice that. One through six. And then look at one through 31 off. Okay, it's a good amount of practice for you to do. They're not tough. It's about factoring. That's what it comes down to. Okay, you got to be able to factor. Any questions on this? Um, in the problem set, mm -hmm. I was finding a critical point. I don't know if I did this wrong, but I got like x squared is negative 4. Okay, let's go. 
Let's go over that. Very good point to make. So imagine you had a problem that said this. Like this kind of thing? Yeah. Because what happens here is this. You make your t-chart, you say x squared plus 4 equals 0. And you say x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 2. But here you've got x squared equals negative 4. And this should have happened a few times in rock set. And there were a few of you that didn't have any questions. Now, if you square a number, what is the result? Always. Positive. So does this make sense on the left side? OK? If you square some number, you can't get this negative 4 here. It doesn't work. And the answer you're going to get here is imaginary. We haven't gone over that yet. So for now, just ignore it. It's not going to affect your solution. So this number line would look like this. And then you would test the regions. Okay? You would just take the real solution. So any non-real solution or any imaginary solution, as far as number lines are concerned, can be ignored. I tell you now, you won't have any of your tests. Because you have to over imaginary stuff. I know we did come up with a problem set that. Okay? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go over the test right now. So let's answer that question. Let me just stop recording. Okay? Or are we getting